So my name is Brett Nelson from the Department of Emergency Medicine. We're going to go over very quickly today how to use the V-Scan device to perform the ultrasound scans that you'll need for your ASM-1 curriculum. Opening up the device turns it on. You've probably figured that out already, but now I have to speak for a little while to use up the time while this thing turns on. So typically you're going to stand to the right of the patient when you begin your scan, and we're going to have some gel ready for applying it for the patient as well. So the machine automatically starts off in cardiac mode. That means that the little V on the top of the screen is going to be towards the right hand side. And since we're starting off in cardiac mode by default, we'll start with the cardiac examination. So the first step is to look at where you think this patient's heart is. And I would guess by looking at his surface anatomy that his heart lay in his chest in this position and at this angle, with the apex probably coming down in about this direction. So right in the center of the heart along the long axis, I'll place the ultrasound transducer with the probe marker facing up towards his right to see what image I find. So at this location now, I'm going to adjust the image until I have something that looks like this. And I'm moving a bit more medial so that I can see a view of the left atrium, the left ventricle, the mitral valve, the aortic outflow track, and the right ventricle. And that's the first view that you need to obtain when performing this study. And again, we're still in cardiac mode. The next view I can do in either cardiac mode or abdomen mode. When I'm in cardiac mode, I'm going to have the probe marker facing towards the patient's left-hand side, and I'm going to perform a sub-xiphoid view. I'm going to place the probe below the xiphoid process, aiming up a bit towards his left shoulder, and I'm going to change my gain, my depth, I'm sorry, with the bottom button here. And you see that image looks a little bit dark, so I'm going to brighten it up a bit. And we can see the liver in the near field towards the top. And beneath that, we can see the right ventricle, the right atrium, the left ventricle, the left atrium, and the bright white around the heart in both directions is the pericardium. So this sub view in many patients can be maintained uh, perfectly accurately by using cardiac mode, but I can also obtain the same view using the abdominal preset. And in some patients, this is going to get you a better view. Notice that when I'm in abdominal preset, the V changed to the opposite side of the screen. The V always equals the probe marker. So now, if you pan back a bit, you'll be able to see that to get this same view, I need to move the probe marker to the patient's right-hand side. So when I'm in abdomen mode, the sub view has the V on the left side of the screen, the probe marker to the patient's right. When I'm in cardiac mode, I have the V to the left of the screen and the probe marker towards the patient's left-hand side. The next view we're going to look at is the lung. And for the rest of the studies for the entire ASM course, we're going to be in abdomen mode. So to look for uh, B lines and A lines, which are signs of normal lung and pulmonary uh, edema, we're going to place the probe on the anterior uh, wall of the chest until I start to see pleura and reflections. So here, for example, we can see A lines. The first horizontal curved line is the pleura, and the remaining lines beneath it are reflections of pleura. This is normal lung. There's no pulmonary edema in this location. We can perform the exam on the other side as well when we find pleura, and we see some A lines coming down there. The top bright line is the pleura, and the remaining lines are reflections or A lines. So applying a bit more gel, we're going to now look at the lung for pleural effusion. So we do that by going on the left side and finding the spleen. We're about at the level of the posterior axillary line, and we can see the spleen in the near field on the top left of the screen. And we see the diaphragm as this bright white curved line coming down from the left side of the screen. So above the diaphragm, here, is where we would see black stripe, which would be pleural effusion. But in his case, there is none. 
Similarly, we move on to the right side, which is going to be a bit more anterior. And in this case, we're looking at the liver. And the liver is up here in the near field. Again, we see the diaphragm underneath. And below that, we actually see a um, reflection of the liver known as a mirror image artifact. So you can see that, or you can see just sort of gray, uh, non-distinct structure. But, you could, uh, but as long as you're not seeing black, crisp fluid above the diaphragm, there's no pleural effusion. The next thing we'll look at is the gallbladder. The gallbladder can generally be found about seven centimeters lateral to the xiphoid process. So we hold the probe in abdominal mode with the probe marker towards the patient's right-hand side. And right around the level of the costal margin, we're going to place the probe and have a look through the liver, sweeping up and down as we go. One major landmark to look for is the portal venous system. Um, and there's the main portal vein right there. And it has a bright white wall to it. And if we scan back and forth from that area, we can see the bright white line of the middle hepatic ligament leading us to the gallbladder. So in this particular case, by angling up, I can see the gallbladder just on the top left of this ultrasound screen. So now there's a couple ways that I can do uh, approach visualizing this a little bit better. I can change the depth a bit because I see that the gallbladder is in the near field, and I can rotate around to get that gallbladder back into view. And I'm going to fan from anterior through the middle of the gallbladder to posterior and make sure that it doesn't contain any stones. If you need, have a little trouble visualizing it, you can ask the patient to take a deep breath. Can you take a deep breath for me? And hold it. And that can lower the gallbladder further into the abdomen. Another approach you can breathe normally now is to look above the ribs. When I was below the ribs, I was angling up to see the gallbladder. So I should be able to still see the gallbladder if I slide in between the ribs. And there it is in the center of the screen. So right now, if you look on the body, I'm in between the ribs. And I'm fanning up and down to get a view of the gallbladder. When you ask the patient to uh, tell you if the point where you're visualizing the gallbladder is the most tender point on their abdomen, that's a sonographic Murphy sign. So does that spot hurt the worst? If the patient says yes, sonographic Murphy sign. If it's not the worst spot, they do not have a sonographic Murphy sign. So to look at the abdominal aorta, we again have the machine in abdomen mode, and we're going to start off with the probe marker towards the patient's right-hand side. Placing the probe marker in the epigastrium just below the xiphoid process, we'll start to see some anatomy that's going to help us. So here we see the abdominal aorta towards the right of the screen pulsating, the inferior vena cava to the left of the screen with a slightly different pulsatile pattern, and the superior mesenteric artery, which is going to be this tiny little structure just on top of the abdominal aorta. Beneath that, we see the vertebral body casting a shadow beneath its bright hyperechoic anterior margin. So back to the abdomen now, we're going to follow the abdominal aorta distally from about the level of the xiphoid process all the way down to the umbilicus, which is going to be a, a, the level of the bifurcation of the aorta. So we're going to follow the entire aorta in a transverse plane, watching it on the, on the screen as we follow it down to the bifurcation, and then we'd like to see the aorta split into iliac arteries. One more view that we'll look at, because we've seen a transverse view of the aorta, is to look at a longitudinal view. So in order to get a transverse a longitudinal view, we'll start again with our transverse view. And we can see there the aorta and the superior mesenteric artery above it. As we rotate the probe around 90 degrees, now the probe marker is facing towards the patient's head, we can see the abdominal aorta in its long view looking like a tube. And that is how we assess the abdominal aorta.